when I go to the device manager after a reinstall of Windows 11, there was probably six or eight devices that were unrecognized. But after installing or downloading and then installing the 3.6 gigs of drivers, I still have two unknown devices that Windows has no idea what they are. And quite honestly, off the top of my head, I have no idea what they are either. So if you look in the downloads folder, you'll see the 3.6 gig file. And um, we should change our view so we can show the extensions. Okay, so this is the file, and then this is the extracted contents of that file. And this is what you get, Windows 10, Windows 11, you get everything. I only need one, I don't need three, but too bad, that's the only way they distribute it, just like they do on AliExpress. Okay, that's, it is what it is, right? You click on this, and then look at all the stuff you've got. It just seemingly never ends. It's just a bunch of stuff. Which stuff do you need? Good luck. So even just telling this in the device manager, if I say, look, in all of that 3.6 gigs of data I downloaded of all those drivers, whatever this is, I should just be able to hit update driver and then click browse my computer and then point to that directory. And then it'll auto search through everything through here and automatically locate the right driver for us. But it isn't there. There is no driver for this included in the driver pack. How crazy is that? Well, let's go to the Intel driver and support assistant. This is a very small download. We'll just click download now. Now look, if you don't know if you have Intel components on your system, you can still download this and install it. And if it comes up and says there's nothing, I'll just uninstall it. There's no risk to damaging your machine if you put this on when you don't need it. So we're gonna to agree to the license agreement, but we do not have to agree to this uh, improvement program. We can decline that if you want to. That's just reporting back anonymously any failures or items where the software didn't work properly. So their engineers get this data and when they see a bunch of the same error all you know, showing up around the same time, they can fix it without you having to tell them they need to fix it. They're already aware of it. In fact, they might have already fixed it by the time you discover it and you just need to download a, a newer version. So let's go to launch here. That's already downloaded and installed. And we can close these other browser tabs because this is how it runs is in a browser tab. And it's scanning the system for BIOS updates, wireless drivers, network card drivers, video card drivers, and potentially what those missing items are, which we don't know. It gives you a nice summary of your system here. And this works with a desktop, a laptop. I, I recommend when you're downloading drivers from a laptop that you get them specifically from the laptop manufacturer. A Dell and HP and, and others have their own utilities which are far superior for their machines. It's not the only way to do it, but it's the fastest, most efficient way to get it done right the first time consistently. Just get them directly from the manufacturer. When it comes to a unit like this, I went right to Simply Nook. Always go right to the manufacturer. If it's a motherboard of a system you built yourself, the drivers are typically primarily for the motherboard. Go to the motherboard manufacturer's website. Or, or in the case of Intel, you can use this for utility. And in the case of AMD, you can use the AMD uh, Adrenaline software, which includes their chipset drivers. Now, the video card driver here is pretty big, but all video card drivers are. My internet connection is pretty small. Unfortunately, whatever those other two PCI devices are still remains a mystery, but we still have other creative and imaginative ways of determining what those are without the need for downloading some third-party software that wants to charge you or throw pop-ups your way or spy on you in exchange for the free product. The free product means you're the product. And we'll do the reboot. Now, when it comes to these PCI devices, uh, we can go under details. Here, drop this box down. We can look up what the IDs are. 
these boxes more or less say the same thing. Uh, it's 8086, which usually implies something to do with the processor. Down at the bottom, you see it says CC, the 51E9 and the CC. I think, and I'm guessing, that that's a communications controller. CC, communications controller. That's often when I've seen the CC used uh, in a device manager, but I, I could be completely wrong. Now, if I hit control C and copy that, and then we go over to, let's go to Google. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can Google this. One is to copy and paste one of those devices. And this says Intel Serial I.O. Controller. Now, that's interesting because when it comes to the Intel Serial I.O. Controller, that is one device that I frequently have to download from a motherboard manufacturer. If you've watched any of my build videos, it's not uncommon to install Windows 11 or even Windows 10 and have a couple of devices that the device manager doesn't know what they are. And I've told you time and time again, you want that serial I.O. controller. Now, because all the serial I.O. controllers from Intel should be the same, in theory, and again, I'm guessing we're shooting this live, we're unrehearsed, I don't know what's going to happen. I should be able to grab any modern Intel serial I.O. driver from any manufacturer. And specifically, we want the mobile chip version. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can go to another mini PC manufacturer that provides it on a 13900H, or maybe even Dell or HP, even from a laptop, because this is a laptop chip, right? This kind of knowledge is power. It doesn't make you... Uh, reliant upon some third-party manufacturer and potentially infecting your machine with spyware, or adware for some free driver software when you just, you, you've got what you need here. And the knowledge of mankind is all at your fingertips if you could be bothered to look for it. So there's the lazy way, which will have consequences. And then there's the intellectual way where you're understanding what you're doing versus, well, I click here and then it just works. I don't know why. That's terrible. That's terrible. That's called ritualizing. That's how people come up with rain dances. Well, when we did this dance, it rained. So clearly these two things are related. No, they're not. You're just choosing to see it that way because it's overly simplistic thought. If you want to go through life being simple, enjoy it. I understand that might lead to you being happier. <laughs> Let the wonder of the world just constantly amaze you. And then when you see how it all works and you see the little man behind the curtain, yeah, you might be a little disheartened and that's okay. I prefer to know, but maybe some people prefer not to. If that's the case, if you prefer not to, you're on the wrong YouTube channel. All right, so what I wanna do is find an Intel serial IO driver that is made available from a manufacturer who sells a 13900. Now we can do this a couple different ways. I can just pick a manufacturer out of my head, knowing they make one, or once again, we have Google, we can search for it and look for a search result coming from a reputable manufacturer. So let me demonstrate how I would do this. Well, not how I would, we're gonna actually do it and see what happens. So we'll come back over here and we want, oops, box. Click over here. Okay. Again, nothing's changing on your view. It's just my view I'm changing. It's, it seems confusing to you what I'm talking about. You and I have two different screens. I have a control screen for the studio, and then you have what I'm outputting. So I want to see what you see. Now, uh, we want the Intel serial I.O. drivers. And in theory, whether it's for a desktop or a laptop, I think it's the same. And this comes up for Nooks. Now these are old Nooks, but let's just see what happens if we grab Intel's driver. Now this doesn't even say it's for Windows 11. So this is not the latest one. There's probably a newer one. This is almost 10 years old. So uh, let me, Rewind that and try again now that I've seen the details of it. We can add uh, Windows 11 up here, that might help. 
to narrow our search down to be more specific in our results. And uh, we see Lenovo makes one. Lenovo is a reputable manufacturer. It's coming from Lenovo.com. Let's see. Maybe that's all we need. Intel Serial I.O. Driver. This is from last year. That's acceptable to me. Oh, is it going to make me put a serial number in? Come on now. Still want it anyway. You just get it without having to do that? Yeah, that worked. Now, go to this box so I can read it. We'll go back to our down. You know what? Let's just close it. Close this. Let's close this. Let's go back to our downloads directory. And we're going to click on this one right here. It's what we just downloaded. Now, if we have the wrong hardware, then this should error out and say, yeah, this doesn't apply to you. It shouldn't cause any harm. That's a very small driver. Did it make any difference? It solved the problem. No third-party software was required in the sense that, or you could say Lenovo is a third party. But what I mean is like somebody who only makes drivers, like some driver system utility, all a waste of time and money. Use your brain, use Google, find the solution, save your money and get it done right the first time. Now, why that driver was not included in that 3.6 gig driver download is unacceptable. The fact that it's a 3.6 gig driver download is unacceptable. But then to be missing a critical driver that the device manager needs that does not come with Windows, at this price point, insane. And uh, that'll wrap it up. I'll see you all again very, very soon. And until next time, bye for now.